It's time for another reading vlog. Today's reading vlog is being sponsored by Penguin Random House, Quirk Books, and Harper Collins. And this week, the only book that I am planning on reading is Whoopa! How to Make Friends with the Dark. I took its jacket off because it's kind of hot today and I didn't want it to sweat. I'm really just too lazy right now to walk into the next room and get the cover. So here's what it looks like. It's beautiful. Not just beautiful, stunning. I think I would actually consider this one of my favorite covers of this year. Anyway, I've mentioned this book quite a bit recently and I decided that instead of waiting to read it, I would just get right into it, break right into the book. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. This book follows our main character, Tiger, who has spent her whole life with her mom by her side, but then one day, her mom suddenly dies. And Tiger just has no idea what to do, because one day she's going down this path, and then out of nowhere comes this huge curve, and it turns her on another path. It's a story about grief, and also how she handles life without her mom. I can pretty much already tell that it's gonna be sad and mess with my emotions, but I'm ready. I've mentally prepared myself. I mean, the title alone is pretty telling that things are gonna get dark, and I mean da 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 dark Well, on one hand, I'm like, I could be reading all these happy-go-lucky <laughs> books on my shelf. I haven't really read a dark contemporary in quite some time, so it's time I give another one a go. So this one's gonna be given a go. I'm actually leaving on a trip tomorrow with my dad. We're going to this super small town in Virginia called Wytheville, and to be honest, there's really not much to do in this town. I have no idea what I'm gonna do, but my dad has some businessy things to attend to, so I was like, I'll join you. Sure, why not? It's a 12-hour drive, so I'ma for sure be reading some of this book. I have this feeling that I'm gonna get a lot of reading done on this trip because I've looked up things to do in Wytheville, and and there's really not much to do there. It's a very, very, very small town. And I mean small. I've got a bit of a book haul for you guys. I feel like there have been so many books that have been coming out recently and I am overwhelmed. And yet I keep accepting books for review and I keep buying books. I just don't have it in me to resist new books. I need them. I need all of them. Even though eventually it will send me down the road of regret. The first book I have here is Romanov by Nadine Brandis. Look at this cover, guys. Look at it. Let it bless your life. Do you think if I rub this cover on my skin enough, it'll clear my skin? Dear God, I hope so. If you didn't catch on to the title. This is an Anastasia retelling. In this book, we follow Anastasia, who is believed to be dead. Surprise, surprise, she's not dead. She's been given this mission to smuggle this ancient smell in spell, not smell, spell, an ancient spell in her suitcase on her way to exile in Siberia. This could be the only thing to save her and her family. No pressure, Anastasia. You just got your family's lives on your shoulders as you make your way to Siberia. Good luck, sis. Just another day at the office. You know, until the door of your office swings open and the leader of the Bolshevik army walks in and it's revealed that he's after Anastasia. It's not his first time hunting a Romanov either. Apparently he needs to get a hobby because it seems he enjoys being on the trail of the Romanovs. Anastasia, who actually goes by Nastya in this book, I think that's how you say it, is only left with two options. One, unleash the spell, or two, team up with Zash, who is a soldier, a part of the Bolshevik army. I think it's great when books mix historical fiction with a bit of fantasy. <laughs> No, but really, I think having that fantasy element kind of brings in some freshness to a story that you might already know. And like the story of the Romanov family is already really interesting, but chuck in a bit of fantasy in there and it becomes even more interesting. Magic. Well, bam. I'm quite sure that this book is going to be overflowing with greatness. It's like when you shake up a soda and hand it to somebody and they open it and it explodes in their face. That's what's going to happen with this book. Like you open it and the words explode in your face. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> To cut to the chase here, I'm looking forward to reading this book. Then I got another retelling, and that is William Shakespeare's Much Ado About Mean Girls by Ian Dosher. This brings in a twist on two stories we've got Much Ado About Nothing and Mean Girls. This mixture to me sounds so wild. Mean Girls is obviously a pop culture phenomenon, and Much Ado About Nothing is a classic. While these two are pretty different stories, they also share a lot of similarities. Things like rivalries, revenge, betrayal, and I'm sure there's some other things I feel like I would be able to actually pull more similarities had I actually read Much Ado About Nothing, but I haven't read it yet. I did study it quite a bit in my English course in high school, but we never had to actually read the book. We just kind of talked about it. I actually really wonder why we never read it, but should I read it? Is it good? Let me know in the comments down below. So this book is basically like if Mean Girls and Much Ado About Nothing got together, had a kid, this would be their kid. I think it's going to be really fun to read Mean Girls in this kind of Shakespearean play format and in the Shakespearean writing style. It's definitely going to bring something new to the story. That's for sure. This also has some great illustrations in it, specifically drawings from very iconic scenes from the movie. So those are some books I have to share with you. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read either of these books. Whoa, look, I'm making a heart of sorts. This is the side of a boy who needs some help. I forgot there was something that I wanted to mention. The Booksplosion Book of the Month for the month of May. We are reading The Princess and the Fangirl. Our live show is going to be on May 25th over on the Booksplosion channel, so if this book sounds interesting to you, pick it up, read it, and join us for the live show on May 25th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Link to the Booksplosion channel down below. That's all, folks. <laughs>
We made it to Wytheville, Virginia, and I have to say an apology because I think at the beginning of this video I was like, I have no idea what I'm gonna do in Wytheville, it's gonna be the most boring place ever. But then we got here last night, and while there's not much to do, it's beautiful. It's so pretty here. We arrived as the sun was setting last night, and it was just so pretty, and I'm so excited to explore today. I'm gonna do a little bit of exploring. I'm also getting ready to go to Starbucks and get some reading done, as I'm really eager to get deeper into the story, so I'm gonna go to Starbucks, get some reading done. Housekeeping is coming, so I need to get out of here, but I've kind of had a slow morning. It was pretty nice. I got a lot of writing planning done this morning, which is super nice. Anyway, I'm gonna get out of here because housekeeping is coming, and I gotta go. Guys, I just had something tragic to me. I was going down the elevator, putting on chapstick, and the next thing I know, I was juggling my chapstick, and I was like, ah, ah, and it landed on the ground. Like the chap stick part landed on the ground the part that you put on the lips landed on the ground So I had to throw it away I could have like shaved off the top portion of the chapstick, but I didn't want to risk it Don't want to get any crap on my lips So I just chucked it in the trash can now I got to get some more chapstick because I can't live without chapstick It's everything to me. No, literally I have to put on chapstick like every 10 minutes because my lips get real chapped real fast So I'm gonna have to go buy some chapstick right now or I will not survive I'm also gonna put on some sun cream right now because protecting your face is important these days. I've actually really gotten into skincare recently. I'm kind of late to the game. Like, I used to just, like, not care. But now I care. I want to protect my skin. I want it to look nice, you know? Nothing bad with that. In fact, it's good to do that. Well, guys, it's like I'm filming a get ready with me. What should we talk about? Let's talk about sunscreen. It protects your skin. That's all I have to say about sunscreen. Let's go to Walmart because I got to get chapstick and then we'll go to Starbucks and read. I'm actually so excited to read. Update, I got chapstick. The day is saved my lips are saved chapstick haul i got the banana boat sunscreen lip balm this is the chapstick that i tend to get because it keeps my lips unchapped and protects them from the sun we love us some sun protection on here can you tell should i swatch it for you guys is that what the beauty gurus do yeah not happening oh uh, yeah i hit the spot okay i should probably stop filming in this car in the parking lot of walmart because this is a very small town and somebody's gonna call the cops thinking that i'm doing something shady when i'm not i'm just doing a chapstick haul calm down everybody i know you're all stressed. I know you're all, nobody's looking at me. Anyway, Starbucks time. All alone again tonight, but you don't seem to forget about yourself. in the hotel. I have a reading update for you guys. I got to page 99 in How to Make Friends with the Dark. Honestly, this book is really sad. I knew that going in it was going to be sad. I got into it. I got deeper into it and I'm like realizing just how sad it's getting. Our main character literally just like has her life completely shifted upside down and it's so difficult reading about her going through such a tough situation. I don't even fully feel that connected to her yet, but I still just like really feel for her. I think it's because I connect with the grief that she's facing. Like I recognize the emotions that she's feeling, even though the grief that I've dealt with does does not even compare to what she's having to go through. Like she's going through a lot more than I've ever been through in my life, but I just recognize a lot of the emotions, a lot of the things that she's feeling when I myself have gone through losing someone. It's just kind of bringing me back to those moments in my life. And that's kind of crazy to me that a book can be that powerful and can do just that, can like portray emotions to like remind you of different points in your life, of things that you yourself have faced. It's just crazy, man. Books are crazy. Right now I'm getting ready to work on some editing, gonna get a video edited. A, 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 A. I'm currently drinking water out of this cup and it's really interesting. There's lips on the cup. So every time I like go to drink, it's like the lips are kissing my bottom lip because I drink like this. So it's like the cup is kissing my lips. Great story. I know. I just really wanted to share that with you guys. 
My dad should be back in like an hour and we're gonna go get some din 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 dinner! Da 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 dinner! <laughs> the next day. I haven't done any reading yet. Really not winning the reading game today, but I've been doing some writing this morning. I did some editing. I've been productive. Then I just went and visited one of the attractions here in Wytheville, Virginia. That being a giant pencil. <laughs> That's right, folks. One of the attractions literally listed online in Wytheville is this giant pencil that's a part of an office supply store. But I'm pretty sure it was a lucky pencil because right after I saw it, I realized that there was a small little bookstore just chilling on the side and I was like, what the heck? How did I miss this? I've been through that part of town several times now and I've missed this bookstore every time apparently. It was a rather small used bookstore and I didn't find anything that I really needed, but the owner was super nice. I talked to him about Ransom Riggs and Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children and he recommended me some books and whatnot. So if you're ever in Wytheville, check out Oracle Books. I've been Googling bookstores around in this area and they've all been like an hour or two hours away. So I'm not sure why Oracle Books doesn't show up on the map, but if you're ever in Wytheville, it's just on the historical downtown Main Street. Hello, it's the next day. Guess who got no reading done yesterday? Bill. Yes, that, that would be me. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm not proud of it, but I'm here to own the fact that I didn't read at all yesterday and I totally could have. And I had several moments where I could have been reading yesterday, but it just wasn't happening. Couldn't get myself to do it. Today, my dad and I are making the trek back to Missouri. It's about a 12 hour drive and we're going to try our best to nail it out and just get there tonight. We we're going to break up the trip and stop in like Tennessee, but then we're like, Mm, let's just get home. He's currently in a meeting, but once he gets out of it, we are gonna book it and get home. It's been a nice few days here in Withville, but I'm excited to get home, get back to my books, my book babies. Also, I realized yesterday that I've been pronouncing Withville wrong this whole time. It's Withville, not Wytheville. There's just no hope for me. Like I'm forever gonna be pronouncing things wrong. It's just a part of who I am, I guess. I got myself some Starbucks for the trip. This is a caramel macchiato, and there is a literal layer of caramel on the bottom. Normally when I get a caramel macchiato, there is some caramel in it. Obviously, it's a caramel macchiato for a reason. Caramel. Caramel. Ooh, that's an interesting question. Do you guys pronounce it caramel or caramel? I know people who do both. But anyway, pretty much every time I take a drink of this, I'm just straight up drinking caramel. So since I didn't read it all yesterday, I want to read around 200 pages today while in the car, which I know is a lot, but I feel like I can do it. This book is not that difficult to read. I mean, it is kind of difficult because the content is very heavy, but it's a contemporary story, so it's not like I'm in a fantasy world trying to figure out how this fantasy world works. So I think I can do it. I think I can nail it. Let's hit the road, Jack. <laughs> I damaged my book and I'm so upset about it. It's really not that big of a deal because it's just the cover of the book, but it's also still a big deal because every time I see this book, now I'm just going to see the wrinkly wrinklies. It's really not that bad. You guys probably can't even tell, but I can tell. I can see it. I've already tried flattening it by putting a bunch of books on top of it, and that helped a little bit, but not enough to please me. The thing that bothers me the most is that this was preventable. I brought this book carrier with me on this trip to protect my book, and the one time I didn't put it in the book carrier, it got damaged. <sighs> I did end up finishing this book this morning. I read a little over 200 pages on my ride back to Missouri, and then I banged it out of the park this morning. If sad was a genre, that would be this book's genre. It does reach this hopeful point, but there's also a lot of tragedy leading up to that point. I was really curious to see how this book played out because I didn't think that Tiger losing her mom could be the whole storyline because this book is thick. And let me fill you in. A lot happens. A lot of devastating things. If Tiger's life after her mom's passing was a road, it would have bump after bump after bump. Things go from from worse to worse to even worse to even more worse to how could this get even worse it does. There are points where you're like, ah, oh, things are gonna get better. But that's when the book straight up laughs in your face. Ah, oh, so maybe things are finally gonna get better. <laughs> With that 
being said though, even though this book does have a dark tone to it, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Books like this can be really hard to read, but they also challenge you in a great way. They get your mind up here thinking about a lot of things. I'm leaning on a 4.5 out of 5 star rating. It's a really good book. It just didn't reach favorite level, which is why I can't give it 5 stars. But that's it for this reading vlog, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. You should let me know down below in the comments if you plan to read How to Make Friends with the Dark or if you've already read it. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright and that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye! Oh!